if you had experience of trauma, say for example, and it's created the feeling of fear and your fear is that it could happen again. You don't know this, but every time you think about that future, that possible worst case scenario, and you feel the emotion, you're conditioning your body to become the mind subconsciously of anxiety. Every time we think about that trauma, we're producing the same chemistry in the brain and body as if it was happening again. So some people after an event like that are literally re-experiencing it a hundred times in one day. And this is a crazy thing because what it does is it activates the survival gene. And when you're in survival, what you want to do is make sure that that doesn't happen again. So what you start to do unconsciously is you start to begin to forecast what you'll do if it happens again, right? And you start selecting a worst case scenario in your mind. And then you think, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? And you start to even make it even more, you get more creative, right? And every time you do that, you start experiencing the emotion of that future based on the pain of your past, the fear of your past, the anxiety of your past, the depression of your past. And so the person's conditioning their brain and body into the past and at the same time, they're literally bracing themselves for the worst case scenario in their life because in survival, if you prepare for the worst, there's better chances of survival. And you could have 10 really great things go on in your life and you can have one bad thing and you keep focusing on that one bad thing because you gotta be prepared for it happening again. So mm -hmm. people unconsciously then spend their whole life looking around the corner, waiting for it to occur. We also know that when a person person is in an environment that's remotely familiar to the event, even to the smallest measure where they can associate something, a small little trigger, they're going to have that same emotion consume them, literally consume them. So the problem is not that it's just in the brain, Brian. The problem is it's in the body as well because it's the emotion that's conditioning the body subconsciously into the past. And now we're 5% conscious mind, 95% subconscious mind. So then that becomes a very profoundly distinct program for that person. So they lose interest in any other thing that is not related to the emotion they're experiencing. In fact, no new information can enter their nervous system that isn't equal to the emotion that they're experiencing because it's not relevant. They're in survival. Survival says, be prepared for what's about ready to happen. Be prepared for the worst. Be ready. Don't let it get you this time. Know what you're gonna do and it's usually you know, a very primitive reaction. For me, it's never about the event. The event is incidental. It's about the emotion. So then when you start lowering the volume to that emotion and you teach a person how to get beyond their analytical mind, enter the operating system where those subconscious programs exist, change their brain waves and begin to make significant changes. When they start making those subconscious changes, they're less reactionary. You teach them how to find the present moment. You teach them over time the tedium, of returning back to the present moment and managing their attention, managing their energy. And you are literally training an animal that has really poor manners. The body's been just conditioned to be like a, a feral animal that's in survival, but when you start working with it and you keep settling it down. In placebo studies, 81% of people who have uh, depression, if they're in a placebo study, and 81% of those people who are taking the placebo actually respond as well to the placebo as they would to an antidepressant, 81%, it's a pretty high uh, yeah. study. Mm -hmm. What that means is they're making their own pharmacy of antidepressants right within the nervous system is the greatest uh, pharmacist in the world. So what's the relevance, uh, the significance of that? The significance is really simple. And people begin to change their emotional state, they begin to alter who they are. It may take more than one attempt at this because in that placebo study, they took the placebo for six to eight weeks. Now the pill represented the possibility of them getting well, their thought. When they start looking forward to or anticipating getting better and they feel inspired, when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, you're moving into a new state of being. Now the brain and body are no longer living in the past. The brain and body are living in the future in the present moment and they're beginning to produce substantial neurological, biological, and genetic changes in their body. But the placebo study for depression, that person took the pill for six to eight weeks, which means you may actually have to change your state of being 
for six to eight weeks before you begin to see the change. So I don't want this to be a panacea where mm -hmm. you do it once and you're better. What if they create an inner event that carries an amplitude of gratitude or joy or freedom? Breakthrough from the chains of the past. When the body is liberated and you feel that elevated emotion, the stronger the emotion you feel from that breakthrough, the more you're gonna pay attention to the image in your mind. And now, you're now beginning to brand new circuitry in the brain and your body's being conditioned into a new future. And the stronger the emotion you feel, and the more you pay attention to the picture, the more you're conditioning the body over time to the future instead of the past. So now, you keep knocking on that genetic door emotionally, then that emotion ultimately signals a new gene that upregulates up that gene to produce better proteins. And the person then all of a sudden starts healing. And we have research to show that people can do that in four days. If you have been an experienced, uh, if you had experience of trauma, say for example, and it's created the feeling of fear and your fear is that it could happen again. You don't know this, but every time you think about that future, that pr possible worst case scenario, and you feel the emotion, you're conditioning your body to become the mind subconsciously of anxiety. So now all, all you need need now is some cue in your outer environment that says it's unsafe, that it's, there's damage there, that you're, you're a victim, something's bigger than you that could have an effect on you. Well now, that feeling of fear is going to cause you to think thoughts equal to it. So the person then no longer needs the environment to feel that fear, they just have to have the thought about that condition now. And now they're literally knocking their brain and body out of balance by thought alone and the body's constantly living in emergency mode. And it takes a lot of energy, a lot of resources to live in emergency mode all the time.